Hello everyone and welcome to another Toon Boom tutorial. In this video I'm going to talk about a really simple way of creating some hair where we can have parts going in front and behind and a couple of other clever tricks about working with the art layers so that we can keep the drawings together but separate them when we need to and have the power to animate them individually as well. So let's have a look. As you can see from my drawing I have this kind of weird orange character here and what I'm going to do is, because basically at the moment it's just a head drawing, the eyes, the pupils, they're all kind of just drawn on the, the layers because I'm not going to actually animate with this for now, the mouth. Um, you're not getting a selection box, by the way. Um, it's not one of the chocolate things that you get in the UK. It's um, You don't get the bounding box because there's no peg. If I add a peg to it, when we click on it we see the the bounding box so if you're wondering why you're only seeing this sort of highlight it's just because i haven't got the pegs attached because we don't need it right now so i've also created a layer called hair now if i press a to activate this and turn it on you'll see it's a real mess um but all that is is basically if we click on the hair layer we can see that on the line art i have a fringe the color i have the back part and the overlay i have kind of like an overlapping side part so when I fill these in on the drawing layers, um, let me get my color correct. There we go, the black. So I'm just going to color all these in. And the reason why you might want to uh, put all these things together is if you've got something layered that you need to be able to work with as one. So if you are working on the hair, obviously black, it's all looking like one big blob. But um, when you are you know, working with different colors and so on, you would see uh, variation. For example, if you're layering up a hand that's holding something like a prop, you want to be able to see maybe how the front part of the hand aligns to the back part and so on. So this is one of the reasons why you'd want to keep the drawings all connected, all the layers, these art layers connected in one drawing, actual element and frame. Now, how do we layer this thing up so that by default, it's going to layer correctly? So we don't have to you know, keep going in and animating things and moving them in Z depth. What we need to do is we need to split up these art layers because at the moment, all four of them, they come in together through this port. If I zoom in a touch, they're coming in together and they're all going on top. And um, that's fine. I could have it on top if I want, or I can connect it to the back. So it's behind. Maybe that makes sense because most of the stuff's going to be at the back with your hair. That might be the case. Um, ignore that color color card for now, but uh, I'm going to keep mine at the front just to show you how it how it uh, has the the biggest effect. So let me just bring in an art layer um, filter. So I'm going to press return on Harmony 20. You can just press return, and on previous versions you can go to the Node library and search down here. But I'm going to press return, and I'm going to type in color. Oops, um, the color art that isolation. Okay. And then I'm going to bring this one in here and I'm going to bring that to the back. Now let's just have a little bit more of a look at what I've just done there. So I've created another tangent coming out. So I dragged from this port of the hair to here going to the back. Now it's not done anything right now. You can't see anything happening because on this one on the left, everything is still coming through. So it's still bringing in the color art, the line art, the overlay. So it's, it's creating this black mass at the front, which I want to get rid of. There's a couple of ways of around this, and it depends on the, the kind of the use. So do I want to be able to animate both those pieces individually, or do I just need them to be in the front? The really simple method would be to just have them um, both visible. So let's just press return. And instead of choosing line art, which would bring in just the line art or overlay, that overlay layer isolator. We're going to bring in the layer selector. Now the layer selector, sometimes if you've got something selected, it will automatically pop it in. So hold down the Alt or the Option key on a Mac and then pop it into there. Now the layer selector, if we open the properties, it allows us to choose which art layers are visible. Okay. So choosing to have those visible. Now that's really um, you know, all you need to do for the basic level because now if I was to add a peg to this hair, 
if I was to move this around, this hair is going to always, even if I move it off the character, it's going to come back in in the correct position. And if I press R to reset on the peg, R for render, it will reset to that uh, correct position. You might also um, be aware of the fact that you can go inside the properties of the drawing and turn off art layers in here. But the downside of this is you can't just turn off the color art because this is being used to filter this one over there on this side. So that's why we need the layer selector. We're basically saying to the thing, well, I, I need you to, um, you know, basically on the right hand side, just filter the color art and on the left hand side, the line and the overlay. That's all well and good and that's going to be nice. But what happens if you want to be able to animate maybe um, the back part of the hair uh, differently to the front parts? I'm going to show you that solution now. So what we could do is we can do what's called a, a clone of this drawing. So copy, paste, control C, control V or command C, command V. And this is going to actually be, I'm going to use this piece for my front pieces. Okay, so this has got the layer selector. Again, we could actually do this inside the, um, the properties of this drawing and just turn off the color art and close it down. The reason why that's probably preferable is because it's one less node, which on a simple hair solution, simple rig is not going to make a difference, but on a complicated rig with maybe hundreds of layers, that's going to make a big difference. So that would be the uh, optimized version. And then on this version, again, I'm going to delete this. And what I'm going to do is open up there and turn off everything except the color art layer. So now we have uh, hair front and back. I am going to call it hair back and then this one on the left hair front. Now the reason why you want to um, rename these is obviously so you know what they're doing but they are also still linked. They're still the same. So if I was to have different drawings, um, if I press the, the left bracket, square bracket, or go to the library and go here, both of them will disappear and both of them will reappear when I toggle the drawing that's being shown. And that's because they are clones. So when you change the substitution on one piece of the hair, it changes the other one. They're using the same folder of drawings, but they're also linked in terms of their exposure. But if we give them individual pegs, so if I was to give uh, the back, press Control P, Command P with it selected, and then for this one, the same again. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually link this up. So the hair front isn't individually animatable, and we can move these around like we did before, but the back is. Now I'm going to move the, the pivot point up here using just the peg pivot. Yours might be in a different location there. It's just a rotate tool. And that means that I could put a little bit of movement on the hair if I needed to, or even add a deformer if I wanted to. Just going to very quickly just add something like this. And so now this hair, it's not ideal, but it's allowing me to get a bit of movement into that hair, which I wouldn't be able to, to isolate if it was just using the, the art layers. It's this way, this clone method allows you to basically put pegs and things much easier on top in the normal hierarchy setup. So that's how you easily split up the hair, create like a default, don't forget, you don't animate these parts down here. The way they connect to the composite is never animated. You don't animate the movement of these connections of the ports. What you do instead is you uh, animate the Z depth on the pegs above the images. Okay, so above the drawings, there are the pegs, and these are the things that hold the animation. In the cutout animation method, that's what we do. We use drawing substitutions to change which drawing is being shown in front of the camera. Um, which is like traditional animation or in cutout it's you know swapping the pieces and then we use the pegs to to do the animation hold all the animation information i hope that video was useful to you and i hope it simplifies the, the process of making something like this this hair setup or any other application that you can find for it in uh, animating in toon boom harmony